Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can create this very nice sliding effect. So uh, we will, we will tr I will try to show you how you can pretty much create this slider. So next goes to the next images. There are only three images in this and then previous goes to the previous images but what I would like you to focus is actually when I use the next and previous button, it not only scrolls, you know, the, the content over here, but also look at the sliding effect on the image itself. So if I go like this, come back, you see as if the image is coming from, you know, behind this area back to its place. Again, so next, and then coming back, you see you have this very nice effect. So let's get started. I'm going to go over the HTML markup and then we can switch to the CSS and JavaScript and then I'll go step by step on how I created this. So the HTML part is pretty simple. As always, I have a container uh, to kind of uh, use it for centering the elements. Uh, so the class is a slide container and within my uh, parent container, I have two buttons, next and previous. And then I have, or prev, and then I have a div which represents this area over here. Inside my div, I have a thumbs div, which is pretty much the parent container of my three, uh, let's say, thumbnails or thumbnail images, which actually uh, expands the whole width of all of these thumbs combined, right? So it's actually, as you can see, this is kind of uh, masking out that pretty big uh, div that has the width of all of these images combined. So there is not so much uh, stuff in the markup. Uh, let's switch to the CSS, right? So as you know, let's just switch to another view over here. I can describe it better. So my parent container, the only reason I have it is to center everything I have in the middle of the picture. So I just give it a width of 560 pixel height of 400 pixel, which is pretty much, you know, the area that we have here. And then I use position absolute left and top 50% and then using transform translate minus 50% on the X and minus 50% on Y to kind of center. Uh, my parent container and consequently everything that is within that, right? Next thing that uh, I want to go over in my CSS is the slider, right? So this is pretty much my slider over here. The one, the div that you see with uh, a solid gray sort of border color, right? So the width is a little bit smaller uh, compared to my parent, which is 560 pixel. I gave it the height of 350 pixel, basically the area that I want my picture to reside. Gave it a margin top of 10 pixel from its container and then again used absolute positioning and transform to kind of center that within my parent container, right? So if I give it maybe background color to my uh, parent container, let's say red, you will see where my parent container is and I kind of centered the slider div within that, right? So that was pretty easy as well. Nothing strange. And then the most important thing obviously is that you have to have overflow hidden, right? Because if I remove this, you will see that the div, the thumbs div within that is actually this one which encompasses, as I said, all the images together. So I use overflow hidden, right? To kind of only show the area that is within the width and height of my slider, right? And now we are going to the uh, thumbs, which is the one that actually contains our images, like first, second, and third. This one has a position relative Height is 450 pixel, and width, as you can see, width is a big number, right? So if I go a little bit down, so you can see I have my slider and thumbs and obviously my divs, 
which is this one, I have a width of 380 pixel and a height of 330 pixel. So I just multiply this number by 3, assuming that all my images have the same size, which I will get, get to that. So, and then I multiply it by 3 and add a little bit to have a little bit of a padding, right? So that's why the width on their parents is this big number. And uh, let's just remove this. This is unnecessary. And then I obviously want to use, uh, want to tra translate that parent slider either to the left to show the next one or to the right, you know, to show the previous one. Uh, and then I use transition to kind of have this uh, transition, right? And then getting back to the images or the the divs that contain those images, uh, I only gave it a width and height of 380 pixel and 330 pixel, which is this. And then I gave a little bit of a box shadow just to make it a little bit more fancier. I gave a margin of 10 pixel for each of them. So when I said that we get the width of each of these and then multiply it by three and then add some uh, more to it to become this number is just because I also introduce this margin for each of them. So you see this margin between two pictures, right? And then gave it a border radius. And in order to put them, all of them in the same row, I used float left, right? So if I remove this to, you'll see that they all come like, you know, uh, in one column rather than in a row. So I used floating to kind of put them one after the other in a row, right? And uh, then again, I define the transition all, and I that transition in each of these is the one that moves the uh, image itself, right? Within each of these divs, right? And in order to give uh, some pictures, I just went to Google. Again, don't use these images without the permission of the owner if you want to use them for commercial purposes. So what I did, I used the background image, gave the URL, I used the background size cover to kind of scale that image so that it fits within the div that it is assigned to. And then I gave a background position of 50%, 50% to center that image right the same thing for the second and then the same thing for the third right and uh, now i basically want to tell you how i put this previous and next over here pretty easy i just gave a position absolute you know some border radiuses width and height and everything and then i basically put the left to zero and then for the next one, I just basically put put it over here. So what I did, uh, you know, I showed you the parent container width. It was pretty much like this area. So what I did, I basically set the left of the next to 100%. It will come somewhere around here. And then just by trial and error, uh, using calc function, I just moved that a little bit back to the left by 40 pixels so that it kind of looks, uh, uh, you know, correctly placed, right? Which is not exactly, but I mean, just, I mean, maybe I can do like 45 or 46, maybe seven to kind of have pretty much the same distance that you have here, maybe even 50. Yep, we can see you have a, uh, the same distance from my you know, uh, slider. So yeah, that's pretty much it for now. And then going over to the JavaScript part, I'm going to switch to this layout and I will go to JavaScript. Uh, you will see that I defined the number of elements that I have and I'm using jQuery, right? I defined the number of elements that I have is three. I defined the current one that I'm in is obviously the first one. And I define my element width to be 40. Uh, and then when I say on the click of next, so the bottom with the class next, when I click on it, right, if my current number, which is 
at the moment one is less than the element count which is correct so one is less than three I want to add my uh, I want to actually uh, add the element width and then use transform function on my thumbs class which is the class that encompasses all of this so basically I'm moving the parent container of these images which was that big wide uh, div to kind of move back and forth right and I'm using CSS transform to be able to do that right so by clicking on next I defined I initialized a variable move to be zero and then when I click the next I basically add that 400 which is the width of this right to that move and use the transform function on my thumbs right to kind of transform it so what happens when I click on this it translates my X to minus and then that value and minus is because my kind of uh, parent div goes to the left I have to use minus over here and then obviously I have to keep track of my uh, current so whenever I go to the next uh, my current is one now it's gonna get two and that's why we kind of check this over here so that if I start pressing this all the time it doesn't change right the same thing goes for the prev so if the current which is now for example three right if the current is three then I want to basically change the current to one less and also I want to change the move that has been accumulated when I click next uh, I will just you know subtract the element width and then I choose the transform property to kind of move it forward which pretty much means that as you can see the parent container moves forward right so this is also relatively simple for those of you who know JavaScript uh, it was just uh, to be able to kind of create this slider nothing fancy nothing efficient and now the cool part, which is this movement that you will see here, you see how cool these things go back and forth within their containers? That's the place where I use background position on my divs, right? So you know that I have a second, third, and thir first div that I assign the images as if they're background images, and I set the position to 50% and 50% as you can see here what I do is that I say whenever I added the move class to their parents right the first the second and my third div just change the background position to 20 pixel and 50 pixel right by default they are 50% 50% and when I want to when I add that class move right what happens is that it actually moves the background image right to be in the position of 20 pixel right on the x-axis and it remains on the y-axis which is 50% 50% that's why when you move like this you will see this very nice sliding effect on the image images themselves right and obviously in JavaScript when I click on next what I do I basically toggle the class move which means that it adds the class to this image meaning that it moves its background position from 50% 50% to 20% 20% and then obviously I use toggle class because I need to add and remove this every time I click on the images right that's why you get this pretty cool animation so I hope you liked this tutorial uh, if you haven't subscribed please go ahead and subscribe like and share this tutorial if you enjoyed it I will obviously put the code uh, of this uh, prototype in the description so go ahead and check it out try playing with it and see what you can get and I will see you next time have a good day or night